Good morning, everyone. My name is Robert Kirkpatrick, uh, Chief Technology Officer of Instead and uh, Chair of the recently formed Open Mobile Consortium, of which our hosts, UNICEF, are a member. I'm sure you are all familiar with uh, the pioneering work of the Grameen Bank under the leadership of Nobel Peace Prize winner Muhammad Yunus. Um, many in our field use the term sustainable fairly loosely. Dr. Yunus does not. Um, in a very real sense, he has redefined it for all of us. Some of you may also know that there is a growing family of Grameen companies, um, enterprises, social enterprises that work in a variety of sectors with a strong commitment both to the socioeconomic development of Bangladesh and the formation of scalable and replicable models uh, intended for use all over the world. Uh, one of the newer members of the Grameen family is Grameen Solutions, a software development company led by the man whom it's my great pleasure to introduce to you this morning, Kazi Islam. You all have Kazi's bio on your USB sticks, so I won't catalog his advanced engineering degrees, his extensive international business management experience, or his leadership at companies like IBM, Ford Motors, and Jaguar. Rather, I'd like to note that while I only met Kazi uh, mid last year, I've been deeply impressed with the work that he and his organization are doing. Uh, Kazi today will present to us on technology innovations for the poor, challenges, and opportunities. Um, I'll also note that uh, based on uh, our view of his work, uh, Instead has recently entered into a partnership on a number of projects moving forward uh, with Grameen Solutions, about which we're quite excited. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kazi to the podium. Thank you, Robert. Good morning, everyone. Today, I want to talk about what should be our role in innovations for the poor. So innovations for the poor, when we talk about the developing world and the people in those communities, we can think about all the issues as challenges, or we can think them as the opportunities to have and to explore. I want to give you some examples of those challenges, whether you want to see them as challenges or you should take them as opportunities for us to do things. I'll talk about some of the examples based in Bangladesh, but I want, I want to assure you these, these issues and challenges are very common across the developing world. For example, for education, between sixth grade to 10th grade, the dropout rate in Bangladesh is about 83%. Now, you can think that as a challenge or issue, or you can think about it as an opportunity. What technology you could come up with, what innovations you could come up with to keep those kids in school, to provide them incentives. Number of schools in Bangladesh are not adequate. Cost of education is out of reach. Lack of initiatives to come up with alternative education systems is virtually lacking. Let's talk about healthcare. Again, take them as challenges or opportunities. It's up to you. Infant mortality rate is about 54 per 1,000. Number of physicians is about 26 per 100,000. Number of community-based healthcare workers is about 31 per 100,000. Again, you can see them as challenges, or you can think about opportunities. What technology you could provide so that the dependency on degree doctors could be reduced, so that people will have incentives to come to the healthcare clinics and seek help? Think about agriculture. 60% of most of the developing countries' population depend on agriculture sector. Agriculture sector happens to be the biggest employer in most of the developing world. But think about, still, if you go to Bangladesh, you would see the, still the cows and the small uh, plowing systems are used in plowing the land. The government, who has the responsibility of distributing fertilizers, there is no way of checking if the fertilizers are reaching the right people. Could you come up with a technology? Could you come up with a solution to take that? and help with that issue. Governance. 
most of the developing countries belong in the bottom half of the corruption list in the world. And I think technology could play a tremendous role, tremendous role in bringing people together, giving voice to people, so that the government does its job properly. Now, do you think there's lack of innovation? Do you think there's lack of innovative companies? Do you think we're missing innovative people? Or do you think the poor are not innovative? Answer is big no. I'll give you some examples. Think about a smart company like Boeing. Make 747 and 777. How long does it take a brand new Boeing to get to a country like Bangladesh? It takes, in an average, 25 years. Now, you can argue that, yeah, Boeing planes are very expensive, so that poor countries like Bangladesh cannot afford them, brand new. But the fact remains, it takes 25 years to get a new innovation from Boeing, get to a country like Bangladesh. Think about drugs, medications from Eli Lilly or Johnson & Johnson or Mark, how long does it take? In an average, it's about 10 years. Again, you can argue that yes, there is FDA and there is regulations and there is genetic drug issues, but the fact remains that it takes about 10 years to get that drug to a poor country like Bangladesh. Now, are the poor not innovative? Again, I said the answer is no. If you think about the global population, 80% of world's population live in the developing world. Now, if you say that 20% of the population in the developed world are more smarter, I would argue that you're wrong. If you argue that those 20% of the population innovate more, again, I will argue that you're wrong. So there are more innovations happening in that part of the world. People are much more innovative. And I'll give you the reason why they're innovative. In Bangladesh, for example, I just shared the numbers a few minutes ago. 2.7 million people becomes job ready through their education right after their graduation or they, they become of age. As a nation, we create about 7,000 jobs, 700,000 jobs annually in Bangladesh. That means we are meeting about 25% of the national need. 75% of our population, young population, I might say, becomes unemployed every single year. Now, do you think those people just sit around? No. Survival instinct kicks in. They become entrepreneur. They become innovative. They innovate because they have to survive. So poor people are, in my mind, much more innovative. Now, we, the smarter part of the world, somehow failed to capture those innovations. I think we talked about that yesterday. Capture those innovations and spread that. A innovation from a company like IBM or a company like Microsoft, it gets spread very easily because they're a marketing machine. They have plenty of money. But a poor person innovating a, a water filtering system, he doesn't have the money or the means to spread that. Now, could you come up with a sustainable process to capture that innovation and reverse the trend and take it from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid? I think you can through the technology innovation. So I'll give you some success stories that all of us can be proud of and all of us can be uh, can look forward to. Gramin Kollan is an organization in family of Gramin organizations in Bangladesh. Kollan means welfare. This particular company focuses on healthcare services for the poor. In Bangladesh, we have rural health, healthcare clinics where you could go and get services because the government doesn't have formal institutes for people to get medical services. Would you believe in Bangladesh, you can get your healthcare premium, your whole year worth of healthcare premium for less than $2. Less than $2. This company provides that. It has 300,000 subscribers 
And I mind you, this is a very profitable company by selling premium for $2. And it's not for you only, it's for your family up to six members. So you may ask, how do they do that? And I challenge you to come and study Grameen Kollan and see what you can learn from it.